right, for your Holy Spirit will guide each and one of our children and us in every step of the way. Father, your word says we, we, keep, we are your sheep and we know your voice. It says you will show us things to come. It says the voice of your spirit will come to us and say this is the way and walk ye in it. And we stand on these promises, Father, and ask that you teach us to continually hear your voice, to acknowledge you in all of our ways. Help us to recognize when you are speaking to us and we will obey in Jesus' name. Now we stand in your holy of holies and open our spirit to receive wisdom that you have afforded us. We put ourselves in a position to hear and receive instruction from you. We enter the secret place of the Most High by the blood of the Lamb, and we purpose to live our lives in your presence. We open our spirits to receive of your spirit on this day, knowing that our speaker minister, Diane, will have a word in due season to minister to everyone that hears. We thank you that you are faithful to your word, Father. We thank you that you, what you say is certain and sure. And when you say you will deliver us, we can rely on that promise. So right now, we receive your supernatural protection, deliverance, instruction, and wisdom for us and our families in Jesus' name. Now, Daddy, we thank you that we do not walk in fear. We do not fear death. We are never spiritually dead, for you have given us eternal life. So when we leave this body, we are immediately with you, and we declare that to be absent from the body is to be present with you, Father. You are ours, we are yours, and we are one together. You've given us joy unspeakable and full of glory, so we refuse to be depressed or discouraged about anything. You've given us peace that passes all understanding, so we refuse to be worried or concerned about anything. We simply roll our care. In fact, we cast our care on you, knowing that you care for us. I do, I do my best, and we, and then we rest. You covered us with favor for this day. We have favor with you and man, Daddy. People will do great things for us daily. Everywhere that we go, favor goes before us, it follows us, and it surrounds us. Our families walk in favor. And anyone that pertains unto us, they are favor because of us. We are blessed in the city and blessed in the field. We are blessed in the basket and blessed in the store. We are blessed coming in and blessed going out. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and never beneath. We love and serve the, love, serve the Lord with all of our mind, heart, and soul, and nothing shall separate us from his love. This is a good day, one that I've never seen before and one that we ne will never see again. So we declare that we will give God, our family, and ourselves the best for this day. So, Father, we thank you as hearts and minds are preparing to receive from your word that the Holy Spirit has his way. You just, uh, remove burdens. You destroy yokes. So, Holy Spirit, move up and down every aisle, in and out every row, and minister to the hearts of your people. From the parking lot to the sanctuary, from the youth, the, in the infants, Father, all the way to the youth, we thank you that Holy Spirit has its way. No one will leave here the same. Everyone will rise in their responsibility as believers in you. They will fight the good fight of faith and stand back and watch you do it, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise right now for what you're doing in this country. We know that you take the foolishness of man and turn it to your good. So we thank you for and pray for our leadership right now, from the president to the police officers in the street, from the governors to the teachers in the classroom. We declare that every decision that they make is in the best interest of your glory, Father. You are working and positioning them in a way in which you can be glorified, Father. So we praise you right now. Thank you for wisdom, for insight, for obedience to your word, Father. Watching and declaring and knowing that we shall see the salvation of the Lord because we are willing and obedient. We will eat the good of the lamb. So we give you the glory, honor, and praise for that as well, Father. Right now, I speak to anyone that is dealing with sickness and disease. Satan, you leave them now in Jesus' name. Minds that are usurped with confusion, frustration, anger, and hopelessness. Satan, I serve you notice to leave them now in Jesus' name. We do not have the spirit of fear, but of love and a peace and a sound mind. So I thank you, Daddy, that you give us direction. You give us insight. You give us boldness to walk in faith. As we speak to that mountain, that mountain shall be brought low. As we speak to that situation, that situation shall be resolved. As we speak to our own household, Father, we thank you that your spirit prevails in every situation. So right now, as a body of believers, we lift our hands and we proclaim that you are God, that you are worthy. Praise him out of your own mouth. We magnify you, Father. We lift you up. We exalt your name.
name, for you alone are God, and there is none like you. We are your precious children, and your promises are yes and amen. So we thank you, Father, that as we stand on your promises, we see your goodness, we see your deliverance, we see your healing, we see your salvation, we see your prosperity, and we give you glory. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, let's lift our voice and worship the Lord in this place. Hallelujah! We expect amazing today. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah! Come on, lift up your cry to the Lord. Whoa! Give a big shout in this place. Hallelujah. Good morning, Linked Up Church. Hope you're feeling great. Touch your neighbor and declare breakthrough in their life. Come on, touch them, say breakthrough. Yeah. Victory is here today. I declare victory is here today. If you receive that, celebrate your victory in this house. Yeah, we love you, Lord. Come on, let's celebrate our God and say, you are, you are the undefeated one, undefeated one. My, life my life and my salvation. My salvation. When, the when the wicked, my enemies and my foes came upon me, to, they stumbled and, and fell. Hey, come on, let's celebrate victory in this place. Hey. Omnipotent say, Omnipotent, Almighty, Almighty defender, defender, He is my victory, my, victory, my, refuge, my refuge, the one I run, one to. I run to. You are the you God, are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough. Yes, Lord, we celebrate it today and let's say breakthrough. breakthrough. You, are you are the God of the breakthrough. When I can't when see, I can't my, see way, my way through. and I Let's go. Say breakthrough. breakthrough. You are the God. shout of victory. Somebody should buck the Lord in this house. Yeah. We declare breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, breakthrough in my struggle. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough when I worship, breakthrough when I praise, breakthrough when I lift and glorify your name, breakthrough when I dance, breakthrough when I shout. You are the God. Everybody say it now. Breakthrough in my heart, my mind, in my, mind. my spirit, in my, spirit. In, my soul. in my soul, in my weakness, in my, in my struggle. You are the God. Come on, come on. Breakthrough when I worship, when I praise, when I lift and glorify you. Breakthrough when I dance. You are the God. One more time, say. Breakthrough in my heart. 
Yes, he is. We declare. We decree. We receive. Yes. You are the God. Hey. Breakthrough in our worship. When you can't see your way through, sometimes you won't know what to do. That's when you look to him. He is the breakthrough. Yeah. Walls fall down when we shout through. Yeah. Strongholds break when we pray through. So somebody praise him in this place. Lift up your shout. To the God of the breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your praise. Continue to lift up your sound to the Lord. Yeah. Victory is here. Come on, somebody just say, Victory is here. Come on, say, Victory is here. Now say, victory is mine. Come on, say, victory is mine. Now, if you agree with that declaration, lift up your worship in this place. Hallelujah. Night cannot whisper away what he said in the light. Thank you, God. Because he is my firm foundation. My anchor won't be moved. Storms may collide, but my heart is on fire with his word. And it never changes. <laughs> So when listen to the sound of power on my lips, Jesus has broken the curse, and he has never lost a battle. Who are you, great mountain, that you should not bow lower? Jesus defeated. The darkness, and he has never lost a battle. Anybody know our Savior always wins? Come on, does anybody? 
Anybody know our Savior always wins? Yeah. Come on, let's testify together. Say, He is my faithful. He is my faithful. Calling me out of the dark. Yeah. And night cannot whisper. Night cannot whisper away what He said in I am who He says I am. He My soul is on fire with Let's do that again. Come on, say, He is my faithful Father. He is my faithful Yeah. Come on, declare with me, calling me. Calling me out. Yeah. And night cannot whisper. Night cannot whisper away. Yes, Lord. Yeah. He is my firm foundation. Yeah. My anchor won't be moved, no. Storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with his word. Come on, let's say, when listen to say, a power on my lips, Jesus has broken the curse, yeah. He has never lost.
Jesus has broken the curse. He has never lost a battle. Who are you, great mountain? Say. Who are you, great mountain? That you should not bow low. Come on, say. Who are you, great? Who are you, great mountain? That you should not bow low. The power of love and life and death is in your tongue. Who are you, great mountain? But you should not follow. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And he never will. He never will. And he never will. declare that all over this place, that he never will say, and he never will, 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 sickness bounds to him, yeah. your victory, Lord. We celebrate your victory, Lord. We receive victory, Lord. Come on, speak in this atmosphere. Speak your victory in this atmosphere. Worship this week in rehearsal. And we were going through this set, and we were talking through some things. And she came up to me after rehearsal. And she said, Bernard, I, I just love the presence that's in here. I hear you talking about victory and seeing all this stuff happening around me. My family's sick. My kids are having issues. And I've been in church all my life, and I, I have to admit, I don't, I, I don't think I've ever learned how to fight. She said, can you teach me how to fight? I don't, I don't really know how am I supposed to do this warfare thing. I'm supposed to, you know, the violence is supposed to take my force. I, don't, I know how to pray. And I know how to worship. And I know how to come to church. And I know how to put my tithes down. I just need you to help me. I just really need to, I want to know how to fight. And I said, okay, I'm going to pray for it. And I got some resources, but I'll pray. And whatever God gives me, I'll give you. And the more, the more I prayed about it this week, I realized that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. And so we as believers, now the world would say if you get into a battle, the best thing for you to do is to go and confront them and tell them off and, you know, throw some bowls, throw some hands. Y'all gonna look at me like that? Y'all never had that feeling? You never just wanted to slap somebody? Y'all never wanted to slap somebody? Okay, I've wanted to slap some folks sometimes. But as a believer, I have to know that my strength is not my own. And so that Bible verse that says, where the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that means this ain't going to do it. And it doesn't matter how hard I pray. Y'all have to watch this. It matters where I pray. Now, it doesn't matter if I'm in the four walls of the building. It matters if I'm in his presence. Because when you go into the presence of the almighty God, he's the one that knows the beginning from the end. And so we stand in his presence not just to get blessings from him, but to get instructions from the master designer. And whatever is in your way, whatever you see in your life, he designed it to be there to show you how big he was in you. Y'all are missing this. 
So can I get some people in this place just to lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord? If you've got some stuff you're trying to fight through this weekend, just lift your hands and remember this posture. Remember this place in his presence. Lift up your words of worship now. Because this is how I fight my battles. Yes, Lord. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah, it's a simple declaration. Let's say it together. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah, I see strength rising in this place. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah, I'm getting instructions from the master creator. This is how I Weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Yes, Lord. The next part is easy. It may look like I'm surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes, Lord. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You're changing my perspective, Lord.
you may feel like you're surrounded, but you're surrounded by him. His arms are holding you now. His words surround you now. your gratefulness unto an amazing God. Somebody release your thank you in this place. Hallelujah. 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 We just sung good news. We already win. We are victorious. The battle has been won for us. Amen. We don't have to toil. We don't have to fight. We don't have to cry. We don't have to doubt. We don't have to fear. The battle Pastor Trish, but I thank them for allowing me this opportunity to come before you and speak today. Amen. Amen. Can you hear me okay? Amen. Okay, okay. I don't want to be too loud because I was a little loud earlier. Amen. 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 That's good news. That will carry us our entire life if we keep our mind focused and trusted in the Lord. He's already done it. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what they've said, what they've told you, he, them, they, she, he, whatever. Whether you got a job, whether you don't have a job. Whether you're in health or not in health at this moment. That's good news. It's already done. Just keep your eyes on him. Amen? Amen. Let's get into it. I, I, I got the... Pastor Trish won't let me come back no more if I don't, so we're going we gonna to keep it on time, all right? So, did the introduction, so we're going to pray real fast. Father, in the name of Jesus, just come to you. <sighs> Thank you for what you've already done. If you don't do anything else ever again, you've already done it. You've already set the table. You've laid it out before us, and all we got to do is walk it out in the name of Jesus. So we come to you, thanking you this day for the word of God that will come forth. Thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace, Father. Thank you for the anointing, the Holy Spirit that's here right now in Jesus' name. I pray that I decrease as you increase. As I open my mouth, you feel it. Tell me what you'd have me to say to your people. And that as I do that, I thank you that they'll hear the word, they'll receive it, and more importantly, we will act on it in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your unconditional love toward us. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross for us, carrying all our guilt and shame, 
and rising again, seated at the right hand of Daddy, ever praying, ever interceding for us. So right now we give you all the glory and honor, praise, and we thank you for the lives that be, will be one to your kingdom today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Well, well, well. You may be seated. Today is a good day, amen. We're going to get right into it. The title of my message today is Take It Easy. Just take it easy, okay? You know, in today's society, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. There's a lot for us to be oppressed, depressed, worry, fear, anxiety, frustration, situations, circumstances, overworked, underpaid, having a job, not having a job. Just the traps of life, amen? amen. Pol politics, politicians, division, racism, sexism, greed, poverty, lawlessness in the land, just to name a few. And that can cause us to forget who we are and more importantly, whose we are. You know, we shake our heads in disbelief and doubt and, and, and frustration and wondering what in the world is going on in our world. But the Lord said, don't be ignorant of the enemy's devices. He told us that this, this will happen. These are, these are some dangerous times and dangerous days, amen? And then we often find ourselves turning to the very people who created the mess we have in the world. In other words, we find ourselves turning to the world instead of turning to who? We do that quite often. We're looking for answers, but we're looking for answers in all the wrong places. Again, the world can't give us the answers because they created the mess, amen? Amen, amen? all right. But what I wanna do right now is I wanna thank God that he gave us our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died, and, who died, was buried, and rose again on our behalf so that our lives could be energized, so our lives could be refreshed, so our lives can stand for truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. We trust him no matter what. With all the craziness that's going on, if you look around, he has kept us. Because guess what? We're here today. Amen? Amen. Amen. We could have been dead, buried in our graves. But we are here today. He has kept us, and he will continue to keep us because he said he'll never forsake us or leave us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, just real quickly, I just want to give a little, little situation that happened to me. Speaking of some of these things that we talk about, being depressed, oppressed, beaten down, weary, um, yokes on us. Uh, recently, um, I was at Chick-fil-A. I, my husband and I, I have an old car, and we're looking to get this car refurbished. And so, you know, we go to Rub Man, your cousin. We go to, to him to get the hookup in fixing my car. You know who Rub Man is, right? So that's who we go to to get our car fixed up. Well, this particular car needs expertise and some specialization, a person who knows what they're doing. So I have been going back and forth, back and forth, dealing with this car, in and out the shop, fix one day, need repair. Uh, fixed, need repairs, so forth and so on. So, we decided that we're not going to go bruh man no more. Because bruh man don't know how to fix my car. Amen? Amen. But I don't want to take it to the dealership because I still want the hookup. Amen? Amen? So we found somewhere else to go. But in the meantime, while the car was fixed and running, I go to Chick-fil-A, the new remodeled one over there on Cobb Parkway, where they got the nice two lanes now and you can go in there. So I went on, it was one day and it was about three o'clock. It was like 20 cars in both lanes and I'm thinking, what is going on? Why isn't all these people, why aren't they at work? It's three o'clock and they probably looking at me saying, why aren't you at work? <laughs> so I'm in the drive-through, place my order, everything's good, car running good, air going on. So I'm just waiting to drive up to the window. When you know it, right before I get to the window to get my food, the car quit. No warning, no nothing. It just went dead. Now, you're talking about burdens and yokes and being overloaded and heavy loaded and all that. So, I'm already mad. Mad that it quit on me and I can't get my food, number one. 
Number two, mad that people looking at me like I'm boo the clown. Now, you know how it is when your car breaks down and everybody looking at you. So I had to get out the car and wave them to come around. Then they looking at me like they don't know what I mean. I said, come around. Just come around. You know, just. OK, so then I'm trying to crank, couldn't crank it. So thank God that this um, Hispanic man who couldn't speak a lot of English, but he had his daughter to interpret for us, he came over and said, ma'am, what's wrong? And I didn't know, it just went dead. So he helped me. I got in the car and he pushed me over to, you know, that side lane where they send you when it takes extra time to fix your food. So I parked my car over there. Now, you know I'm mad, because number one, that was on one of the hottest days I think we've ever had. I had a hat on my head, I had on hot clothes, I'm sweating, I'm hot. I was so mad, I didn't even, I didn't even, when I got my food, I just stayed outside and ate the food. I was also so mad that I was still determined though, to get my food. So I walked up to the drive-thru <laughs> in front of this truck and I said, I need to get my food. <laughs> and I guess they, was, they felt so bad for me, they were like, yes ma'am, we got your food. We so sorry to see you in your car. I said, I am too. <laughs> but those type of things, burdens and worries and stuff going on and things happening, you know. so. With that being said, let's look at Matthew 11:28 28, and 30. And we're going to look at it from the Amplified. And it says, we're going to go through a lot of scripture real fast because I want to encourage you today that your hope, your victory, everything you need, your life is in the word of God. And a lot of times we don't know it because we haven't gotten in that word to see what he says. So this is just a reminder today. So walk with me as I go pretty fast. But Matthew 11, 28 through 30 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen? Amen. The Greek word for come is Come here, follow. So Jesus is saying, come here, follow me. And this was the first recorded invitation uh, that he gave to all men. Not just the Jews, but he also gave it to the Gentiles. And he said, just come. Come to me. This was during the time when, let me back up. That's point number one. A under that says that his invitation expressed the desire and compassion of his heart and his appeal for us to come to him to relieve us from oppression. So he invites us to come because we don't have to take all the oppression and depression that we take. Amen? He was calling us to turn away from whomever or whatever we have been depending on and turn to him for our total and complete dependence. Now, you know, back in the day, Jesus disrupted some things. And in this context, it was talking about back in the day when they had laws that they had to follow. follow. Not grace, but laws. Back then, there were over 613 laws that people had to follow. And Jesus came with a totally different agenda to set them free. And a few of these laws were, if you were a female, and it was that time of month, you could not come outside the house because you were considered unclean. Another one of the laws was you couldn't eat shellfish. So all your scrimp, your lobsters, <laughs> your crab, even pig, swine, you couldn't eat that. So they, had, they were so burdened down with laws and trying to keep up with those laws that man created. It was the religious elite that created these laws to them. Not, for, not from God, because God did what? He came to set us free. Amen? Amen. So... The people were just worn out, the do's and don'ts, the rules uh, of that time. He came with healing, love, and forgiveness. The law suggested that it was of your own goodness or your self-works. Jesus said, it's of me. It's, it's of me. You can do nothing apart from me. And so, you know, the religious elite was upset about that. You know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all those other seeds, they had it out for Jesus because he came with a totally different agenda. 
and it was just to heal, heal the captives and to set us free and to deliver us. Amen? Amen. So the next definition is weary. And what do we mean when we say weary? Tired, fatigued, burdened, grievous, wearisome, and oppressive. Another definition for burden is a heavy load. How many of us are carrying heavy loads today? I know I've been guilty of it over the last few months with everything that's going on in my life, my family, uh, on my job, um, being a daughter of a mother who doesn't even recognize who I am anymore and having to help take care of her along with my other family members and just other things that are going on in life. You can be burdened sometime and heavy loaded. But here's my question. Are we unable to fully connect to God because of those loads, because of the heavy load, because we're frustrated, because we're tired, because we're weary, worn down and worn out? Doing it in our own strength. Doing it in our own strength. Okay, let me move on. Rest. The next definition. Rest is from the Greek word A-N-A-P-A-U-O. I don't know what that says, but it means to rest, to relax, calm, or refresh. Today we could say we need to break away, take time to get away from someone, something, or some type of responsibility. Do you ever feel like that? I feel like that quite often here lately, especially as I get, I ain't going to say older, but as I get more mature. Amen. 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 The definition of yoke is zykos, a frame and crossbar placed on an animal's neck to pull various objects. Back in ancient times for farming, they didn't have tractors and plows, so they used oxen, and they would put them in this yoke. It looked like a pitcher frame, and then they would have uh, some type of rope or whatever within that yoke that would turn the oxen and the animals whichever way they wanted it to go for the purpose of farming and plowing up the ground. Well, they use two because two is always better than one when getting the job done. Amen? Another definition for yoke is to couple, to join together. The word easy is the Greek word, whatever that is, C-H-R-E-S-T-O-S, meaning pleasurable, delightful, and comfortable. And then the definition for light is the Greek word uh, elephron, describing something that is not burdensome, but light and easy. My second point is being yoked, coupled together with Jesus in our life. Our ministry, our business, and personal affairs is a choice we make. He's already made the choice. He's laid it out for us. Will we decide to agree with what he's done in our lives? Will we couple up with him? Will we join up with him? Because guess what? Us joining up with Jesus, he doesn't need us, but we need him. But us together... We're unbeatable. We are unstoppable. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to go to 1 Peter 5, 7 from the NIV. Here's another scripture that talks about his yoke is easy and burden light once we do this. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. What does cast mean? Cast means to throw, to fling, or to, spin, or to sin. We literally throw our cares our anxieties, our worries, our fear, our doubt, our heaviness, whatever it is, throw it to him. He says because he cares for us. And once we throw it there, number three, what do we do? We leave it there. We don't pick it up. Because when we go back and pick up what we've already given him, it's, it's, it's as if we're saying, I'm not sure. I think so. You might, you might not. Just in case, I got a plan B. None of that. You leave it there. Here's a suggestion that I, I heard a, a minister talk about, and I thought this was very good. Once you throw your cares on him, just get you a piece of paper and date it um, and put the time that you did that. Because you know you're going to need it, because you know the enemy going to come back up and bring it up to you. Well, what about this? What about this? What you going to do about this? What you going to do about that? And all you got to do is pull it up. Here it is right here, devil. You can't touch me. I already gave it to the Lord. I trust him and I honor him. He already got it under control. All I have to do is sit back and take it easy. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Where is my next one? 
Psalms 55:22. Let's go there from the Amplified. It says, cast your burden on the Lord, release it. So why are you still holding on to it? The word says, release it. Why are you holding on to it? Why haven't you let it go? I'm listening. <laughs> why haven't you let it go? Cast your burden on the Lord, release it, and he will sustain and uphold you. He will never lie, allow the righteous to be shaken, slip, fall, or fail. Did you just read this? Did you just hear what I said? He said he will never allow you to slip, fall, or fail. Never. That means we always win. We don't have any excuses. He said it in his word right here. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken, slip, fall, or fail. So if we're slipping, falling, and failing, have we not released our burdens to him? So evidently, if we're doing some of that, which I'm guilty of that, slipping, falling, and failing, so I haven't given him, I haven't released it to him. I haven't let it go. I keep picking it back up, whatever it is. All right, ooh, that clock is getting fast. This above scripture, it was a commandment from the Lord. It was not a suggestion. This is what he commanded us to do. The word is telling us exactly what to do so we can have exactly what it says. We would never slip, fail, or fall. When I read that, that just blew my mind. So that means I can be victorious in every area of my life, every situation, every circumstance, no matter what it is. So then, I guess I need to ask a question. I'll ask it to myself. What you doing, Diane? What you doing? You all in the way. Are you in the way? Just a thought. How many of you remember Martha? Um, Mary and Martha. Okay. Luke 10, 41, 42, for those of you who, who don't know the story. The scripture says, but the Lord answered Martha. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. You know, as many times as I read that story, it just dawned on me. Mary had choked, um, Martha, Martha, you are, are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. I never saw that. We're out doing everything. We're doing it all. We're doing everything. Trying to do right. Trying to please this one. Trying to make sure, you know, we, we're giving and we're sowing and we're praying. And it, just one thing. We're working 20 hours a week. We work in sometimes a second job. I'm not knocking that. Don't get me wrong. Hear what I'm saying. You do what you got to do until God elevates you or until you can do better. But I'm just saying, it's only one thing that's necessary. We do so much extra. We do so much extra stuff. It's only one thing that's necessary. And it says, Mary has chosen the good thing, which will not be taken away from her. The only thing that was necessary, the one thing is Jesus. Jesus and his word. Jesus was not upset with Martha about serving and preparing. He was more concerned that he was there. The life giver was in her home, in her house. Everything that they needed was right there. Right there in the house. And Mary understood it. Martha didn't. Jesus wanted relationship. That's all he wants. He created us for, God created us for a relationship. Mary understood that, Martha didn't. Everything was there. She didn't even have to blink her eye because Mary, uh, Mary was at his feet. Amen. But then I also say that Martha gets a bad rap. Because think about it. I'll just use me an example, as an example. If I knew Jesus was coming to my house, I'd go out and buy me some new furniture. I'd hire a maid, butler, valet services. I'd go out and buy me some china, because you know I have no fine china. I'd get the best food, exotic fish. I'd have some scrimp, lobster, caviar. I wouldn't get no catfish. 
but I would get salmon, what is it, flounder, what's some other fish? Whatever it is, trout, I'd have the best laid out for him. I'd go hire a band, they'd be playing heavenly mu music. If I could get some of the cherubims, I'd get some of them to be flying around or whatever. Jesus was coming, so you cannot fault Martha for wanting to have it together because Jesus was in the house. But here's the thing, we do all that. He doesn't even require that of us. He just requires a relationship with us because he loves us. So, I got to ask, so what you doing with all this stuff? We doing all this stuff, why? What's our, motiva what's our motivation for doing all this extra when he hadn't required it of us? Are we trying to impress? What are we trying to do? How much money are we spending and wasting that he, that he didn't even require? Trying to impress, trying to prove. How much time do we waste trying to impress, trying to prove? How much time do we spend looking outside to the world instead of looking inside to God? Because everything we need, he's telling us how to have that victorious life. It's right here. If we will receive it. He's already laid it out. Will we receive it today? All right. Time is running. Ooh, Psalms 105.4. Look to the Lord and his strength and seek his face always. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 from the Amplified. Number five. Point number five. God's grace is enough. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight and understanding. In all your ways, know and, know and acknowledge and recognize him. And he will make your path straight and smooth. Check this out. Removing obstacles that block your way. That's some shit. If I have on these heels, because if I run, my feet going to hurt, so I'm not going to run. But if I could, I'm telling you, he just said he removes any obstacles. So what we doing? What are we doing? What we doing? His word tells us that. Do you believe his word is true? Yes. Do you believe his word is true? Yes. It's simple. We make stuff so hard. Jesus is not hard. hard. Serving the Lord is not hard. It's easy. We got the instructions right here. So why are we doing all this extra? Why are we doing the most? Second Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, Amplified. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and mercy are, excuse me, are more than enough, always available regardless of the situation. For my power is being perfected and is completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly boast in my weakness so that the power of Christ may completely enfold me and may dwell in me. And that was Paul talking about his weaknesses. And God strengthens him through his weaknesses. Listen, he never said we wouldn't go, in, go through anything. Because in this life we will. I'm sure you already know. You've been through some things. But he said he'll bring us through. And when he brings us through, nothing can touch us. As he brings us through, nothing can touch us. The weapon may form, but it shall not prosper. Amen? Amen. Point number six, God's peace. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 from the Amplified. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request. One translation says your wants as well as your needs known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which, which stands guard, over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. He says specific requests, your wants and your needs. This is in the word of God. I didn't say this. That's why it's important for us to go through these scriptures so you can go back and look over it later and start speaking that thing out. Like we said earlier, I think Minister George said in the first several, you start prophesying over yourself. Because he said right here, make your specific requests known to God, your needs and your wants. So why are you looking for it somewhere else? 
Why are you looking for somebody else to meet your needs? Even your wants, why are you looking for someone else to do it? Just receive what God's word has said today, amen? amen. And while I'm talking to y'all, I'm definitely talking to me. Philippians 4, 8, and 9 from the Message Bible. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you've learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. So goes our thought life, so goes our physical life. What you thinking about? People, what are you thinking? That's a familiar phrase. People, what are you thinking? So goes your thought life, so goes your life. We can get a glimpse of your thoughts by how you're living. How you living? How you living? How you living? John 16, 33, from the Amplified. Ooh. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. I go to this all the time. It says, from the, it's from the AMPC version of the Bible. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good cheer. Take courage, be certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you, and I have conquered it for you. That's it. That's it. I could drop the mic right now, and we can go home, because that's it. He's already done it. He said he's conquered the world, so that means there's nothing impossible for us. The only reason it's impossible is because we make it impossible how we think, how we talk. But what does his word say? That's why we preach day in and day out. Get in his word. Connect to God. Have that relationship so you can take advantage of the promises that he's given us. Amen? Amen. Amen. When you connect to God, you connect to your purpose. You know what he's called you to do, the gifts and talents that you can go out and affect and make a change in somebody else's life. But how can you do that if you don't know this? How can we do it if we don't know this? He's t it's easy. He said his yoke is easy. So we need to go back and maybe, and including me, and analyze if it's not easy, what you're doing. If this life seems to be just weighing you down, weighing you down, weighing you down, at some point you got to analyze, and what's the word? Introspect, how do you say it? Look inside, introspect, whatever. Look at, look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just look at yourself. <laughs> I told you I was, going, I was through definitions, but I have one more. World, the Greek for world is cosmos, which means earth, world system. You know, in the, in the Bible, the world system is completely opposed to God's way of doing things, his kingdom. But this is such a powerful promise for, from the Lord. And again, notice that he, he didn't say we wouldn't go through, but he said as we're going through, we can rest in him because he got it. Amen. He has already given us the victory, amen? amen. Okay, let me, hear, let me move on. Second Chronicles 16.9. I told you I'm going to be going through a lot of scripts. I hope you're taking notes so you can go back and get this for yourself and live that victorious life that he's already provided. Second Chronicles 16.9a. For the, for the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth so that he may support those whose heart is completely his. In other words, whose heart is committed to him. Amen. Psalms 138.3 from the New Living Translation. In the day that I called, you answered me. You encouraged me with strength in my soul. You know you can call on him and he said he will answer you? Yeah. Not only here, but if you read um, uh, Psalms 91. He said we can call on him. He said he hears our prayers and he answers them. 
don't know about y'all, but this is good news. This is making me happy. I don't have to struggle. I don't have to worry and, and worry myself to anxiety and depression and get sick and be in the hospital and ulcers and all the other stuff that go along with it. This is the truth. This is the word. I'm not making it up. But you got to know it for yourself and apply it. Amen? It's easy. It's easy. I'm speaking to myself while I'm saying that too. Okay. What did I say? In the day that I called, you answered me. You encouraged me with strength in my soul. This was a psalm of David that he was vowing to praise the Lord for answer prayer. You know, David had all of his prayers or many of his prayers answered because he had relationship and fellowship with God for years. So much so that God said that David was a man after his own heart. Not because David was perfect, because remember, David was a murderer, he was an adulteress, and he was a liar. So if you think you got to be perfect, you can forget that because you'll never be perfect. We'll never be perfect. On our most perfect day, we're still not perfect. And it's not what we do. It's all what God did through his son, Jesus. Amen? Amen. And when our prayers are answered, we, are, we get spiritual strength. We get more confidence. We get more boldness. We become more assured of God's word and his way of doing things and his character and who he is. Isaiah 41.10 from the King James Version. This is a good one. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. There's roughly eight promises and commands in that scripture and in the other scriptures that follow that. So this is not suggestions. These are promises and these are commands. The other three, in verse 13, it says, I will hold your right hand. Verse 17 says, I will hear them, the poor and the needy. And also in verse 17, it says, I will not forsake them. Forsake means to abandon, to depart from them. He's telling us he won't abandon us. He won't leave us, no matter what. I don't care if you just did something a minute ago. I don't care if you just walked out the strip club, you just smoked your last blunt, whatever. And you came in here right now, it does not matter. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. His love is from everlasting to everlasting. It never runs out. He never gives up. But you don't know that until you get in the word. Amen. Amen. Um, I got two minutes, so I'm going to kind of wrap it up here. Uh, Psalms, there's one more I want to read. Two more. Psalms 46.1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That's a promise, not a suggestion. So who are we going to for help? He just said right here, he's our refuge and strength. He helps us in trouble. What trouble are you in that you need help? The world can't help you. He, she can't help you because they're in trouble. This is a promise to us, y'all. To us. He is our helper. That's one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. He's here to help. If we would just only come to him, a lot of times we don't get the help we need because we're looking for it again. We don't go to him and ask for help. He knows what we need before we even ask him. He's laid it out. It's up to us to receive it and then act on it. Amen? My last one, and then, ooh, yep, and I'm done. Psalms 121, uh, verses 1 through 3 from the NIV. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He watches over you. He who watches over you will not slumber. The Lord is near to all of them who call on him, to all of them who call on him in truth, Psalms 145, 18. The maker of heaven and earth is our helper. Think about it. God Almighty who created existence, loves us, says he's our helper, sent Jesus, our redeemer, and he lives on the inside of us. His word says that. So what are we doing? Why are we doing all the extra and the most? It's simple. Just rest. Just trust him. Just come. He said his burden is easy and his yokes are light. Did I just transpose that? Okay, you got what I'm saying though. Amen? 
Oh, man. So I got several other scriptures, but I'm going to have to stop right here. In conclusion, going back to Martha and Mary, we think we need a lot of stuff. We only need what? One thing. Jesus. So I encourage you this week to do three things. Number one, read his word. Trust him. Depend on him for your very existence. This week, this week, make an effort to go back and see the promises that he's made to you. It's not just for me. It's not for somebody else out there. These are promises that he's made to us. Go back and read it. Number two, commit to give all that you have today, all that you are today, to him. Your life, your time, your talent, your family, your job, your money, your health. Give it all, everything to him. And then the third point is, and the last point is, take it easy. Relax. Breathe. He said it's easy. It's not hard. If we would trust that, do we believe that, though? I guess that's the question. Do we really believe that it's not that difficult? Do we believe in the simplicity of a relationship with the Lord? Do we believe? really believe it. Because if we really and truly believed it, again, we would rest. We would be at ease. We wouldn't be uptight, frustrated, downtrodden, because it's simple. He doesn't require a lot of us, just a relationship with him. Not perfection, but just a relationship. Because he did it all. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, amen. I hope you got something out of that word today. Now we come to a special time, so we're going to ask that no one is moving and walking or even talking unless you've been assigned. You know, Jesus, back in Matthew 11, he gave the invitation to come. So we want to give three invitations today, and we want to say simply, just come. The first invitation, some people might be saying, well, Diane, I'd like to get in on this, but how do I do that? You just come. I've never accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I never confessed him as my Lord and Savior. So how do I do that? Just come. So if you're in here today and you want to come, and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right now. I see that hand right there. Amen. Amen. I see that hand right there. Second invitation. Another opportunity to come. You come if you, at one time, you had a relationship with the Lord, but you've kind of gotten away. You kind of left. He never left you. He still loves you. He's been waiting on you to come home. And you want to you wanna reunite with him in relationship and connect to your purpose, connect to family, connect to community. You want to get plugged in so you can grow and mature and then go out and do what he's called you to do. I want you to raise your hand. It's called rededication. The third invitation I'd like to give is if you're looking to connect to family, our linked up family, our church home here, we would love to have you. Uh, our pastors will be honored to welcome you with open arms. And you can get plugged in to a local body and connect with relationships, local relationships that will support you, aid and assist you, but also that will teach you and grow you up. So again, you can go out and make a difference in the life of somebody else. If that's you, I'm asking you to raise your hand if anybody for membership. today. So I'm going to look around one more time. Those of you who came down for salvation, if you raise your hand again for me. I see that young man right there. Is there anybody else? Salvation? Confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior so you can get in on this good life, because it is a good life. Amen. Amen? Rededication. You had a relationship once, and you've gotten away, and now you want to come back. He loves you. He's already forgiven you. 
He's not holding anything against you. Anybody? And then the last one is for membership. If you'd like to become a member of Link Up Church and have Pastor Joel and Patricia Gregory as your pastors, raise your hand. We would love to have you. Okay, we're gonna, at this time, we're gonna ask the congregation to stand. And as we do, we're gonna ask the young man to come down and let's clap for him for his bravery and his courage. Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! How you doing? What's your name? Okay, I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to put you on blast, Mr. Anthony, but this is Mr. Anthony, amen? Thank God for his courage and for his willingness to come down, amen? Amen, amen, amen. Handsome young man, too. I got some nieces, you know, we could, okay. <laughs> so, Mr. Anthony, if you would turn around, I'm gonna ask you to look to your right and my left. And if you will follow Mr. Raynard, he's a real nice man. If you will follow him, he will only take a few minutes. He wants to put some materials in your hand. But let's thank God for Mr. Anthony coming. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, that's it. Thank you. I hope you got something out of the word. Amen. It was my honor to speak before you today. I'm going to turn it over to... Pastor Minister George, amen? Amen. Excellent job. Take it easy. Amen. Well, I am privileged and honored to say it is tithes and offering time. It is time to excel in the grace of giving. So if you desire an offering envelope, you may raise your hand. The ushers or hostesses will be happy to serve you at this moment. Once again, if you would like to do so, please raise your hand. Also, if you are... Uh, still wanting to complete your pledge cards, please put it in this uh, brown envelope. Excellent work. That was awesome. Uh, take it easy. Excellent job, Minister Dye. So while you're preparing that, I just want to read uh, one of my favorite scriptures here. It's a great example of, of, of just what God did for us. And I like to read it, even though I know I can quote it. Um, I'll read from Amplified. John 3.16 says, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whosoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. What God was doing is he was demonstrating sowing and reaping. He took his first and only begotten son and sowed it for us, but he reaped many more sons and daughters. I'm in a room full of sons and daughters that God is reaping because of the one seed that he sowed. And so I don't know what, what you have need of, but the seed that you have in your hand, God is able to multiply this seed sown to cause every need that you have in your life to be, uh, that for every need to be made manifest. And as also we were praying for businesses, and those of you who are individual contractors, we were praying for that as well during this time. I pray to you all already. So whether you're giving in the service or you may have given online already, let's lift up, let's lift up our offering envelopes or our devices. Father God, we thank you because you're the one that gave us the, the, the talents to, to earn wealth, Father God. So Father, as we're sowing this seed into Linked Up Church, Father God, and as we're sowing this into your kingdom, we thank you, Lord God, that you will cause this seed to be multiplied, Lord God. It will not only meet the needs of the ministry, Father God, but it will meet, meet our needs individually. So, Father, we thank you that you're causing this to come back to us in the terms of more contracts, Lord God, more resources, Lord God. Whatever each individual member has need of, Father God, we thank you that it is meeting that need. And, Lord God, we'll be very careful to give you and you alone all of the glory, 
all of the honor and all of the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ushers and hostesses, you may receive the offerings. Please turn your attention to the screens to hear the linked up news. Hey there, it's great to have you with us today at Linked Up Church. My name is Bernard, and I'm a part of our worship ministry. It is great having you with us today. Now, are you on the Dream Team? Have you heard about the Dream Team? See, every week at Linked Up Church, hundreds of people are making a difference by using their God-given gifts and passions in an area of service right here at the church. We call this amazing group of people the Dream Team. Now, if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become a part of the Dream Team, feel free to email us at dreamteam at linkedupchurch.com. If you need prayer, are hospitalized, are shut in, or had a recent death in your family, we would love to know. We have a congregational care team standing by because they would love to come visit and pray with you during your time of need. Our congregational care minister can be contacted by email at wecare at linkedupchurch.com or by phone at 404-334-0336, extension 200. We are here for you, family. Today is the day for you to get involved. Go to linkedupchurch.com slash small groups and find a small group that is made just for you. Here at Linked Up Church, we exist to connect people to God to connect people to their purpose, their community, and their family. We truly believe true change happens in a small group setting. So we have designed our small groups to meet that need for you and find a group that's just for you. Live connected. How's it going, Linked Up family? My name is Jason and I serve on the media team. Do you have a passion for videography, live events, and graphic design? If you said yes, the media team needs your help. As we move into the new location, we need even more hands on deck. So, send an email and a member of the media team will get right back in contact with you. We're looking for creative eyes and heart for the Lord. Showtime. Well, that's all the announcements that we have for this week. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you soon. All right. Well, now you know what's going on here at Linked, at Linked Up Church. Um, one other thing. We got that. Okay. Listen, if this is your very first time visiting us here at Linked Up Church, will you please stand on your feet? Any first-time visitors in, this, in the place today? Please stand. Welcome, 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 welcome. God bless you all. Give it up for our first-time visitors. So listen, while you're standing, we ask, first of all, thank you for visiting with us. We're very honored that you chose to come here. Listen, we have a very special reception that we hold in your honor. And so if you grab up all of your belongings, and follow these uh, beautiful ladies in the red shirts. Also, if you invited them, please go with them as well. And they're going to take you to their reception. We're going to meet and greet you and get to know a little bit more about you. God bless you. And we'll meet you at the reception. Please go with them now. Let's give it up for them. Welcome, welcome. Y'all want me to sing? No, nah, I'm not going to sing like that. All right. We're still going out one more time. Let's give it up for our first time visitors. See, if y'all, if y'all give the, if you put the words right here, I'll sing. No, just playing. Listen, I want to commend you all. You all do a great job of inviting your family and your friends. Keep it up as we move into our new space. Well, let's stand to our feet. All right. So, y'all know that this is. Well, some people call it hate week, right? You know what I'm talking about? The Saints are playing the Falcons today. Oh, now you get it. You get it. All right. We're not going to talk about them ain'ts today and how them ain'ts going to lose. We don't call them Saints because they ain't. Minus the S. I'm sorry. If you're from New Orleans, God bless you. I love you. I'm not praying for you right now. I'm praying for everybody else. No, just playing. 
<laughs> Father God, right now we pray over this congregation today, Lord. We thank you for being so good to us. Father, this week as we go out into uh, our, our place of business, Father, as we go out into the world this week, Lord God, I think that we are divinely of and by you to be productive, to draw other, other people to you. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God. Have a blessed week. God bless you. Say, go Falcons. Okay. Go Falcons. Okay. I have a microphone.